Okay everyone, today we're going to be seeing if it's actually possible to boil dry water. The way you make it is basically you just mix water with a little tiny bit of fumed silica. And the fumed silica is this very light powder and it's also hydrophobic so that when you mix them together like in a blender, you turn it up really high, you mix it together and it forms tiny little droplets of water that can't recombine back together because the fumed silica coats those tiny little drops of water. So what you end up with something that looks like a powder but is actually more of a liquid and all of the white that you see isn't actually solid powder but they're actually tiny little droplets of water that are just coated by this fumed silica. So I showed you this in a previous video and I got a lot of questions about the properties of this dry water. One question that stuck out to me that I'd like to know the answer to is can you actually boil dry water? Because technically you haven't changed the physical properties of it. All you've done is separate the tiny little droplets so they can't combine back together. And also, what does it even look like for a dry liquid to boil? Can it form bubbles? Does it actually just perform like a powder and kind of just steam up? What does it look like? So let's go ahead and boil some dry water and see what happens. Okay, so this is our water that we're going to turn into dry water. So now I'm just going to blend up the water so that we can get it dispersed into tiny little droplets. And then I'll add the fumed silica that's going to keep those tiny little droplets separate. Okay, so I think we got the right consistency now. Now let's try to boil it and see what happens. Okay, let's see what this looks like. <laughs> That's so weird. <laughs> okay, here's our dry water. See how this looks like a liquid in here? But look at it when I touch it. Now it looks more like a powder but it splashes in everything like a liquid. This is the weirdest crossover ever. Now the reason it's white is not because the fumed silica that we added to it is white, but actually because those tiny little droplets of water are all staying separate and they scatter light. So no longer does the light just come straight through the water, but it actually gets refracted in every different direction. Okay, let's start boiling this. Okay, let's see what temperature this is. Now it's not going to be able to spread the heat as quickly because there's not gonna be any convection able to happen. So the way water can heat up so easily normally when it's boiling is it creates a convection current, it heats up at the bottom and it rises so it goes to the top and it creates the circulation. But you can see that this powder isn't going to be able to move very easily at all. So water boils at 212 degrees Fahrenheit or 100 degrees Celsius. So the bulk of it is only 127 degrees Fahrenheit or 52 degrees Celsius. But it looks like there's already some movement happening as if, as if it's trying to boil. So there's probably some hot pockets in here. Because like I said, it can't transfer the heat everywhere very easily. Okay, we're at 79 degrees Celsius. I'm seeing some steam forming now. So it's weird, it's not actually boiling. It's kind of just blowing steam out the sides and you can actually see the powderized fumed silica coming up. So you can see it's just forming a powder again, an actual powder. So 99.7 is actually the boiling temperature at my elevation here. Very near sea level. Okay, so we're at boiling temperature right now. So I don't actually see any bubbles forming. Okay, let's turn up the heat a little. Oh, I see some actual bubbles forming there. It's boiling, look. We're boiling a powder. It's 
So look, we're actually boiling a powder and it's creating this kind of snowfall around me. Okay, so it's created this snow in the air now. So look what's happening. So it's actually boiling. This is so bizarre. Okay, should I touch it? Okay, so this basically filled my entire garage with this fumed silica, which I don't want to breathe because it absorbs moisture from the lungs. So let's see what this actually looks like now that I boiled it. Okay, so here's what the boiled liquid, here's what the boiled dry water looks like. So it's actually still, it's actually still pretty liquidy. I thought it would actually lose more water than it did. You can see the steam come off it when I pick it up and let it air out a little bit. Ugh. Okay, so it looks like you can actually boil dry water. That was actually pretty weird to see a powder look like a powder boiling. So it was crazy. You could see the steam coming off of it. And as the water evaporated from it, a lot of times it would take up the fumed silica with it and the water, the water droplet would evaporate completely. And then it was like it was snowing in my garage with this fumed silica. So I'm surprised it was able to boil and it was actually able to boil very close to boiling temperature of water. So that means that the fumed silica didn't actually interfere with it that much. It probably did raise the boiling temperature a little bit, but overall it was about the boiling temperature of water. So that's actually really weird to think about. You could use boiling dry water to boil stuff without it actually getting wet. Well, thanks for watching another episode of the Action Lab. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, remember to subscribe and remember to hit the bell button so that you can be notified when my latest video is out and head over to theactionlab.com to check out the Action Lab subscription box. We're now starting to ship the second subscription box and we're actually having a sale right now. If you bundle both boxes at the same time and you get the vacuum chamber box and the self pouring liquid box, then you only pay $59 for both of them together. So head over to theactionlab.com to check that out today. And thanks again for watching and I'll see you next time.